Let's begin in Los Angeles, where actor Danny Masterson accused of triple rape. Here he is at the courthouse with his wife, Bijou Phillips, of the famous Phillips family. Masterson, a Scientologist, accused of raping three former Scientologists. This is a case that has had a bizarre um, uh, road of jury deliberations. I mean, it's just been strange. We started, we stopped for 10 days, then we bring in new jurors, we started again. I'm wearing a red tie. Let's bring in Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson, live in Los Angeles with a red tie as well. Um, but what are we talking about tonight? What are we talking? We're not talking about a verdict. Not a verdict, but a decision. After all of these days, all of these weeks that this jury sat through testimony, not just one, but four accusers with the three charges that he was facing, he was facing life behind bars if he was convicted on all three counts. Not much emotion from him or his family who is by his side through this whole thing when the judge declared a mistrial. Here's how we got here. Today we heard two buzzes, that courtroom went absolutely silent, and then the jury this was their question. They said, after thorough and considerable decision, we are clear that it, and it's adamant about maintaining individual accounts and not even close to coming to a unanimous decision and convinced that this will not change. Meaning they were not going to be able to be unanimous on any of the three counts, even if they had decided to deliberate even longer if the judge had made them. So. Here's the breakdown after she declared a mistrial. They were polled. Uh, count one, two guilty, 10 not guilty. Count two, four to eight. Count three, five to seven, Vinny. Those numbers not great for prosecutors, but they, I guess, will get another chance. But this, let me tell you, by the way, the most thoroughly written jury note of all time covering all the legal angles so they could go home today absolutely amazingly written by them by the way now did did anyone speak today because i could imagine that after a a, a conclusion like this um there's going to be a lot of questions were there any answers any statements a lot of people didn't want to speak that were here during the trial for all of these weeks including masterson's family a lot of them celebrities in their own right, and of course a lot of the Scientologists that we saw out in the gallery. But we did talk to all of the key players like we normally do here at Court TV. Let's start with Danny leaving court. So we shot this video as he was hand in hand with wife, um, actress and model Bijou Phillips. She has been by his side since the beginning, dodging all of those questions. Very stoic as he left court today, not really sharing much emotion as he was in the courtroom. But he did smile when I asked him if he had any message for his supporters. Again, you know, he hasn't worked in television or on film since the allegations. So I asked him that and he just kind of smirked. We also got a statement from the Jane Doe's, at least two of them of the three. This is their statement that was released by their attorney. Quote, we would first like to thank the jury for its public service. We are obviously disappointed that at least for the time being, Daniel Masterson has evaded criminal activity for his deplorable acts. However, we are collectively resolved to continue our fight for justice, including in civil court, where we have alleged that Mr. Masterson, along with the Church of Scientology, its leader, David Miscavige, and others conspired to systematically stalk, harass, and intimidate us when we sought to shed light on Mr. Masterson's actions. This legal fight is far from over, and it's critical that we reckon with Scientology's alleged role in covering up the reports of abuse and threatening victims. As for the prosecution, again, uh, they have to decide whether or not they're going to bring charges up against Masterson again. There is a trial date tentatively set for next year. Um, they didn't speak at a news conference um, on the 12th floor like defense did, but I did meet up with them on the courthouse steps here. They were walking away, and I asked these questions. Take a listen. Do we plan to file more charges for... How does it work? Well, right now we just need to kind of discuss the plan moving forward. And uh, you pulled the jury. Um, any insight from that? Yes, we 
spent some time with the jury, and uh, it was helpful. We were able to get some information as to their insight and allegation of the evidence. So. so again, what's next for the state? Well, we're going to talk about it with the office, and uh, we have some dates already set, next court dates, and then uh, we're just going to discuss before how we're going to do that. Okay. Are you disappointed? Well, um, a bit. Assistant D.A. Mueller there, who tried this case, has been on the case since the beginning. Remember, Danny Masterson, his defense team, switched up halfway through right before the trial started. So um, he's taken it very personal. He said that he's very disappointed. No official word yet if he is going to file those charges. As for the defense, Philip Cohen, very fiery during his closing remarks and at times with the judge. He did speak to the media on the 12th floor. Take a listen. Mr. Masterson, what was his reaction? Could you speak a little bit to that after this came down today? I think his master his um, his attitude and his reaction uh, mirrored ours. You know, it's you don't know how a trial's going until you hear what a jury has to say. And as confident as he is in his lawyers, um, you never know what a jury's thinking. So there's a lot of relief on his part, obviously, but there's potentially still a fight ahead and we may have to do this thing again and hopefully what the jury indicated in this case will be looked at by the district attorney's office in terms of how the jury saw this case. And Masterson's family choosing not to speak to the media because of the pending civil suit, Vinny. Okay, what's next for, for Danny Masterson now? Do we know? Right. So again, the judge put on the docket, uh, I believe it's March 27th, um, for a pending trial that is scheduled to take about 10 days. There is going to be a status check after the first of the year. I believe that that is January 10th. Unclear whether or not the assistant DA will pursue charges. He told me, again, you heard it, that they have to have a meeting. They're going to listen to, uh, they're going to talk about what the jury told them and then make a decision down the road. Masterson again facing civil charges in all of this from the three Jane Doe's who testified in this case, this criminal case. So he's going to square off with them yet again. And also for that civil suit, Church of Scientology is named uh, a defendant. Uh, that's going to be a big battle and civil case. The rules are different. He's going to have to testify. He's going to have to answer questions. Uh, we shall see how all that develops. Matt Johnson in Los Angeles. Uh, great reporting throughout this entire case. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vinny. Uh, let's bring in our think tank tonight. Joining us in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Eklund Mercy in Los Angeles, California, deputy public defender for L.A. County, Philip Dubé, and in Phoenix, Arizona, the attorney who represented Jody Arias, author of the book series Trapped with Ms. Arias, Kirk Nermes with us. Great to see you, everyone. Uh, Eklund Mercy, um, the impact of Me Too in courtrooms across this country, um, I, I think, has peaked. I think it's peaked. I, I, think, I, I, don't think, I don't think you walk in as a prosecutor or someone uh, accusing someone of uh, sexual assault, and I don't think it's automatic. Uh, I think it's a much different ballgame right now. Oh, it absolutely is. I, I think that the mistrial actually um, highlighted that there is a kink in the celebrity armor, that um, you're not so far from a conviction. Although it seems that um, the prosecution may have lost the day, but they actually didn't. Their ability to pull the jury was um, just monumental because now they can sit like they can cinch everything in. Um, just seeing the numbers from who would uh, who would vote guilty and who would vote not guilty is just clarity for the prosecution when they get another shot at it. So um, you can see when you uh, questioned the defense attorney, he was kind of just, it wasn't that much excitement because now they know uh, what they need for a conviction. So it's going to be a really interesting trial. The next trial is going to be real interesting. Well, Philip Dubé, you're in L.A. Uh, what do you think prosecutors do here? Because if you add up all their guilties on the three counts, you still don't get enough for a conviction on one count. You had 11 guilties. 
25 not guilties, 2 to 10, 4 to 8, 5 to 7. Uh, do you think that they retry this case? I'd be very surprised, at least as to count one. That was 10 to 2 for not guilty. And that was Jane Doe number one. Forcible rape, Vinny. Do you, I mean, do people really understand what that means? Not only did you rape somebody, uh, you know, non-consensually, but that you did it by force, okay? And this jury found, at least 10 of them, that there was reasonable doubt. I mean, that's the bottom line. Alternatively, they found that this Jane Doe consented. At least 10 of them did. That was their defense. Reasonable consent. And the standard under California law is whether Danny Masterson reasonably believed that Jane Doe number one consented, not whether the victim Jane Doe consented or not whether a person looking at it objectively from the gallery would have consented, but did he reasonably believe it? And there was doubt. And then you look at count two, Jane Doe number two, eight to four, not guilty. That is a very healthy defense split. Jane Doe 2. Count 3, 7 to 5, not guilty. I mean, this was, in my opinion, almost a landslide for the defense. And I think the prosecution really needs to do a lot of soul searching as to whether or not this is the right time, if this is the right case to retry based on these splits. I'm not sure that it has anything to do with the Me Too movement. I just truly think it had to do with the quantum of evidence in this particular case and whether or not he reasonably believed that all three of these girls consented back then, not today, but back then. Well, the reason I mentioned Me Too, because there was a moment in this country where it seemed like uh, there's a presumption that you have to believe accusations. And did that uh, roll into the courtrooms across America? Uh, and uh, this clearly says, no, we're not at that point right now. Kirk, let's talk about the splits, because here at Court TV, I have seen a case, very serious case, a murder case, where the first trial, it was 11 to one for dismissal. The retrial was 12 to nothing for conviction. Do prosecutors always get the advantage on a retrial? Yes, and that's why I would disagree with Philip in terms of the numbers and agree a little bit more with Evan. I'll use a baseball analogy to explain it, Vinny. When you're in the defendant and you're in that courtroom and you're facing those charges, you're gonna throw your best hit. And the state's not going to know it's coming, just like a regular batter. Well, now in the retrial, regardless of what the numbers are, the state's going to know either what pitch is coming or you got to throw your second best hit in terms of defense. That makes it so much easier for the state to gain a conviction. And you're right, even though the numbers are skewed in favor of the defense and both parties can talk to the jurors if they want to, the state is going to have more insight. They're going to know what defense is coming and they're gonna be better prepared for it in a way they wouldn't in the first trial. That's why the conviction rate is so much higher after retrials, and Eklund's right. That defense attorney knows he's in for a worse time of it next time than he was this time for, those, for the reasons I've just stated. To make another analogy, it's kind of like the 2017 Houston Astros for sports fans out there. They knew what pitch was coming. They just had to listen to the banging of the garbage can. All right, Eklund Mercy. Philip Dubay, Kirk Nurmi, with us the whole hour.